Look at that. Over 90 minutes against Curaçao, the United States was outpossessed and outshot. For more perspective, former U.S. international Hercules Gomez joins us now. Herc, how would you describe what we saw yesterday in Philadelphia? Lethargic, uh, disjointed, uh, no sense of urgency. We could keep adding and adding all these different adjectives and it'd all be negative. In no context or no world did you expect Curacao to have this sort of dominance over the U.S. men's national team. Now, before you interrupt me, Sebi, because I know you're going to interrupt me, this isn't a case of you playing down to the level of the opponent. Curacao outplayed the U.S. men's national team between both boxes. It was that ridiculous. The best players on the night for the U.S. men's national team, Pulisic, a few moments of brilliance, and two defensive players and Walker Zimmerman and Zach Steffen, the goalkeeper. It really was a sense of, you, if you take away the jerseys, you didn't know who was who. It was that bad from the U.S. men's national team. Greg Berhalter, for everything we've heard, for everything they've sold us on him, this attention to detail, this everybody knows their role. Well, when I looked in that first half and all the second half, I didn't know if players knew when they were supposed to pressure, who was supposed to overlap, who was supposed to pro provide cover. It was that disjointed from them. They almost looked like these guys had trained four hours before in the hot sun because when they came out, they had no life. Curacao, I don't want to hear credit to Curacao. That should be everything on the Caribbean side, everything Curacao, everything all over Central America. You should be talking about Curacao. On this side, you have to be talking about how poorly the U.S. men's national team played. Herc, is it too soon to ask if Greg Berhalter should be on the hot seat? That was Curacao, and they ceded possession. No, it, it's too soon. It's definitely too soon uh, because of everything we've waited, because of the year, the 18 months, uh, the 600 days plus to a competitive game that we finally waited for Greg Berhalter. So you have to give him time. But listen, let's look really quick where the bar. The bar is Mexico. Mexico essentially phased out Rafa Marquez. That's essentially it. When you look at the U.S. men's national team, they phased out Clint Dempsey. They phased out Tim Howard and Demarcus Beasley, guys who were probably already in the latter end of their career, or career the last couple years that they were playing. Besides that, you have essentially the same pool, essentially the same players. There should be no excuse. I understand there's no Brooks. I understand there's no Yedlin. I understand there's no uh, Tyler Adams who would essentially make this team better. But you can't tell me that if you insert those players tactically, it would be different yesterday. This is on the coach. We're looking at Jason Davis's U.S. player ratings available right now over on ESPN.com. Guys, I'm looking at a bunch of threes Whoa. and fours and fives against Curacao. You saw the report I did in yesterday's show. I mean, we can talk about the coach. The individual players here were bad last night. How did you enjoy your drive home after the game? <laughs> hey, I mean, this is what? <laughs> You're just taking we're the Michael. Even, we're not even 24 hours since the game and you're still not happy. How have you been, Seb, over the last... This is not about me. We can turn this into me, but this is more, much more about this U.S. team. I mean, you cannot... We, we can sit here and we give credit to Curacao for 10 seconds. After that, you have to turn the attention back to this group. Yeah, let's, let's absolutely annihilate a team in a competition that nobody cares about. Uh, they care about it? <laughs> Are you telling me that the players don't care about it now? Um, listen, as players, you know when you're playing in a tournament that's got anything hinging on it. You can throw out your playing for I your country you. and you're doing I this. I disagree. At the end of the day, you know it's a tournament that's, that means nothing. You're playing against a team that you know you should, you should annihilate. You fall asleep. You don't start properly. And then it just... I, 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 I disagree. But all I'll be, I'm going to start you by paying that. some credit to Curacao here because... They have been simply fantastic all tournament long. They know what they're doing. They're organized. They're what a team should be. Other side of that very same coin is what you see from the U.S. And as much as you may want to make the argument that this is a, a tournament that the U.S. team doesn't care about, I, I, I disagree. I, they should. For starters, the U.S. team weren't fantastic in, in the build-up to this tournament. And... and all the talk was about no coach and Bear Halter coming in late. They were disappointing. And now you have an opportunity to impress. You do so against Guyana and, dare I say, Trinidad and Tobago. And then your only true test against Panama, you had the excuse of making any number of changes. Then you come up against Curacao. We are talking about Curacao here. We, we, are, we are talking about a U.S. men's national team that are the beginning stages of this cycle. Players trying to figure out who they are, trying to stamp a certain uh, authority and a presence in the squad. 
and this is how you respond to your first meaningful test. I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Sebi. If I, if I were a fan of this U.S. team, I'm, I'm, I would be as upset as you are right now. There you go. How you, how you have confidence in this group after that, Stevie? <laughs> how you have confidence in this coach after that? I knew that was coming. How do you have confidence in a tournament when you, when you play one game and you make 11 changes for the next? Are you telling me that's a proper tournament? I don't think so. Come on. And if you, th if you don't think that there's, that there's maybe 10 of those players in this, this squad for the Gold Cup, who know that if a tomorrow a team was picked or a squad was picked for a proper tournament, they know they won't be in it? See, no, I, 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 mean, I, 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 I don't agree. Way. I don't agree with the narrative that this is an improper tournament. OK. No, it no, is an improper no, tournament. No. Listen. You've got two it, teams in it. Right. Yes. Good and, tournament. And you are one Good at the tournament. start of your cycle, at the start of your cycle, trying to establish some kind of presence about you, some kind of meaning about you. Well, make and sure you don't the proper take that players are there, then. And you don't take... Make sure the proper you, players are no. there. But who's there has an opportunity. If you're here, you're here because you I have an opportunity that, at the start of a cycle. You don't just turn your back on that and say, well, the, the good players aren't here, so I don't have to try. I'm, I'm not sure how that works. Herc, you're a Gold Cup champion. Uh, let me ask you, is it, is it that easy to suggest that these players weren't motivated last night because the, the tournament isn't up to snuff? No, absolutely not. And I understand what Stevie's saying, but we saw these type of changes in the World Cup as well. Belgium versus England. Do you guys remember that game, all the changes? Now, that said, you're a professional athlete, you're a professional soccer player. This is your first chance to impress this new coach and really try to win back some of that, uh, some of that uh, good faith that you've lost with the fan base over the last 18 to 20 months. You have to take this seriously. I understand you win this tournament. There's not a half ticket to what the Confederations Cup is anymore because that's not, that's not around anymore. But you still have to try to win this tournament. I mean, Curaçao, they want to win this tournament. You should want to beat Curaçao. Now, the positive side of this is four games, that's four games, and you're still undefeated. You still don't have one goal against. I believe it's 12 goals for. This is a U.S. men's national team that for all their, uh, for all that they, they lack, they're efficient and they're getting by. Now, next round, that may not be the case. Jamaica didn't play well against uh, Panama, but it's still a very competent team. A team that's beaten them in previous Gold Cup editions, a team that beat them prior to this Gold Cup. CD, and this is another thing. The good players, who are those good players? This is, what the, this, is the, this is the pool. This is all there is. You may insert maybe three players, but that's about it. For more, sign up now for ESPN+.